I love blessings. I like blessing babies. I like blessing food. I like blessing marriages. I like blessing studio openings. Blessings are a big fat deal for me and my priestessy self. I think that something happens when you lay hands on someone and bless them. I think there's power in the touch. I think there's metaphysical power in the exchange of energy. I think there is psychological power in how it shapes the way you think about yourself and your relationship to the blesser. I don't really care what language you use to describe what happens when you bless someone or when you receive a blessing, but I do know from experience that it's powerful. religious friends. So I'd like to talk today about writing your own blessings and using your own blessings in your religious life. So there are a few elements that are present in a traditional blessing. The first is appropriate touch. Now this could be the laying on of hands on a forehead or on a head or a shoulder, or you know, it could be a water or an oil anointing, but some kind of touch to create connection between the person giving the blessing and the person receiving the blessing. Another element is the spoken word, so that not only the person receiving the blessing hears and literally receives into his or her body this gift of words that you're giving to them, but anybody else who might be around you also stand as witness of those words and agree to the blessing that's been given. Blessings typically affirm a truth about the person you are blessing and their situation and speak to a hopeful future. And I think actually that that's where most of the power lies in blessings and that you're telling true things to a person and you're telling them hopeful things about what's to come. Now there are traditional blessings that maybe you could just tweak the language on. For instance, one that I always loved saying over the congregation when I was pastoring was, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. I still say it over my children before they go to bed at night, only we've adapted the language so that it says this. May God bless you and keep you. May she make her face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May she lift up her countenance to you and give you her kiss of peace. And in that blessing, we affirm that there is something beyond us that has a creative life force, a protective life force. We use the feminine noun to counteract all the male language that is used to describe God in our culture. We ask this force of creativity and love to turn towards the child that we're blessing. And we use a metaphorical language that they can understand, receiving a peaceful kiss. When I work with my coaching clients, especially um, when we're doing a values assessment and they are identifying their core values that are going to guide them, I often close with this blessing. May your life unfold before you in the way your soul intended. And may the things you value most be always right at your fingertips. Amen. Amen. So you can write these simple little poems or poetry of blessings that name true things about the person and speak to a hopeful future. And you can give those to them as a gift. And there's also seasonal blessings from various traditions, Celtic traditions, that are really gorgeous to speak over a family meal or with a circle of friends like the Celtic summer blessing for summer solstice. May the blessing of light be upon you, light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine on you like a great fire so that stranger and friend may come and warm themselves at it. And may the light shine out of the two eyes of you like a candle set in the window of a house, bidding the wanderer to come in and out of the storm. So a blessing like that connects you to the natural year, aligns you with the light, the divine light, 
and speaks of your core values of hospitality and kindness and compassion. So I would encourage you that even if you've stepped outside of the traditional church or if you have one foot in and one foot out because you're becoming religious, to not give up on the tradition of giving blessings and that you experiment with writing your own and offering them to your children, to family and friends in birthday cards and Christmas notes, and that you consider starting off your new year with a new form of blessing. I'd like to invite you to join us in Flock this January. We have a established habit of celebrating Epiphany with a guided meditation around the story of the three wise men. And through that guided meditation, we each receive a word for the year. I write a blessing for each member of the flock that does the meditation and tells me what their word is for the year. So if you would like to engage in a religious community and explore this idea of blessing a little bit more, we welcome you to join the flock in January and I would be more than honored to write a personalized blessing for your new year. Before we leave each other today, I'd like to end with, you guessed it, a blessing. May you find the place where the world's great hunger and your deep gladness meet. And may you dance in that glory for a lifetime. Amen. Amen. Until we meet again, get curious, trust your gut, and live from a place of love. Mm -hmm.